how to determine if a honeybee colony is in critical condition and will be killed by the cold. Here it is, April 1st, and in Michigan it warms up, then it gets cold. It's consistently inconsistent in Michigan, and I'm sure a lot of other states up north are that way. So it warms up and you think you're you're safe from losing colonies, and then all of a sudden it gets cold. It's probably about 40 degrees. We're gonna have temperatures in the 20s tonight. And my bees continue to die. It's not the varroa mites, it's the toxic chemicals in the hive, in the wax, the pollen, and the honey that the crop farmers use all summer or spring, summer, and fall. So it gets in your hive, and that's what causes your bees to die. They don't live very long during the winter. And the most difficult time of year for me is March and April. My colonies are very small. And you may go through and check all your colonies, and they're all okay, and then a week later, they're going to be a lot smaller because bees have died. And if you leave them out in the cold, there may not be enough bees in there to keep the brood warm, and you're going to lose the brood, and then that colony is going to suffer a great deal because they don't have any new brood. So this colony here, what I do is I look, it's not very big, and I go down here and I look, and there's some down in the bottom deep. So I'm going to leave this one alone. This one here, about the same, but there's none down in the bottom of deep. But that is a large number of bees for the temperatures. And we'll go down here. I'll show you some that I found. What I did was a couple days ago when it was warm, I went through and I downsized my hives end of fall, early winter. Any colony that gets smaller, I take away the bottom deep. Because I don't want to be carrying around a big hive. And if they're not using that part of the hive body, I take it away. And then when they start building up, what I do is I go through. And if the bees are all the way across the medium, I will give them their second deep. And this right here, I determined was large enough. It's almost all the way across. So I gave them their second deep. So I don't have to worry about this one. I know this one's okay because I checked it the other day and it's got a second deep. It's the ones that don't have the second deep that I'm checking. And sometimes you won't see very many bees. And then you uh, wait till after you mess with it. And the bees will come out between the frames. And look at that. See? Okay. Before, when I checked this earlier, it didn't look like a lot of bees. But there's a lot of bees. That one's okay. What about this one here? That one's okay. And this is a colony that I downsized a while ago. This is 119. They're okay. I'll leave them out. This one right here, there's no bees in the medium. There's bees down here in the in the deep. I'm gonna leave them here. They've been okay so far. And here's one I've downsized. I took away the medium. And there's another one I took away the medium. Because they have gotten a lot smaller. See how small that, that cluster is? Not very big. So what I do is... Your old t-shirts and such, any old fabric, cut it up into pieces. Plug up the holes, the entrances. And then you take... I have screens that I made up. I put a screen over the inner cover. And then I put a shim with a hole so they do have ventilation. So this one's going in tonight. I've got my strap sitting there. So this one's going in. This is about the same. This is about the same size. See? I decided I was going to bring this one in tonight. So basically, you just go through and you check them. That one's probably okay outside. And these right here all have a second deep. They're okay. And this one here. This one was down on the bottom deep. There's bees up in the medium, a few. But how many bees are down on the bottom? See, that's that's good. It's 
Sometimes you kill bees doing this, but that's the price they have to pay. Because if you just leave them out and you assume they're okay, you're going to find out after a cold night that you've lost colonies because they weren't, they weren't large enough to handle the cold. There's some bees down there, and this one, that one's okay. And this one right here, I determined, I have my screen sitting here, see the screen I made up? It's on a frame. Just some regular aluminum window screen. Don't use vinyl. And this one here is going to get a screen. But that's that's it. But I'm going to take... There's no bees in the bottom deep. Well, I'm going to take the bottom deep away. And what I do is... I don't number my mediums. So when I take away a medium, I take a pencil. And I'll write up here the number. So that I know later on which colony that is. So I haven't checked this one. Let's look at this one. Yeah, that's probably okay. That's borderline. So I got what four I'm gonna take in tonight. Let me show you where I take them. I'm gonna put them on that hand truck. After I stop them, I'll take them in. Okay, this is the room I built last fall in my garage. It's insulated. I can just wheel them in here and I will set them in here and depending on how many colonies I have in here I do have my heater set at a low temperature so when I have a lot of bees in here I don't need the heater but when there's only a few there's eight colonies in here they'll need that heat because if it gets cold in here I don't want them to get chilled I don't want them to lose brood So how's this colony doing, see? These I determined a while ago, they weren't big enough to be outside. And the ones I had left outside are now small again, you know, so I have to bring them in. So this is the stuff that I have to do. And why do I have to do this? Because of the toxic chemicals are killing my bees all through winter, they're dying. It's not the varroa mites, trust me. It's not the varroa mites killing my bees, it's the toxic chemicals causing them not to live very long. Instead of living five to six months through winter, they maybe live three to four months towards the end of February, March, and April. And that time period, my bees are dying off quicker than they're getting replaced. So my colonies are shrinking. And if they were left outside, it would be a dead out, okay? This is what I have to do. If you guys aren't doing this, you're not going to have the success rate that I have, okay? You have to work hard at keeping honeybees alive because of the toxic chemicals. That's why I keep bitching about the toxic chemicals, okay? I'm not just doing it to make myself sound important or anything. I'm doing it because it's necessary. Our bees are having a hard time because of the toxic chemicals, not the varroa mites, all right? And I'm not doing this to try to get a lot of subscribers or views. I'm trying to get the word out. You guys aren't speaking up. We need to get together and have all these toxic chemicals banned from our environment. If you've looked at my videos, I've shown you papers of the state of Michigan sending me saying that my bees died from the toxic chemicals from crop farmer, but the crop farmer did nothing wrong. So what's up with that bullshit? You want me to show you that paper? I'll show it to you. Okay, here it is. This was the inspector from the state of Michigan. They came out in May 2019 because I had a lot of bees die because there was a crop farmer 150 yards south of me planting Early in the morning on a windy day, the wind was coming from that direction. It was blowing from the south. And I had hives out here. And I went away for a few hours to do an electrical job. I came back around noon, and my bees were coming out of the hives doing this, you know, with their legs up in the air. We were, they were dying, okay? So I called that farmer's family, told them what had happened. They didn't come out to apologize. So the next day I called the state of Michigan, and this lady here came out and took samples of my bees. And I told her it was the nurse bees that were coming out of the hives dying. And she agreed to look like nurse bees. So a month later, she called me up and told me, yes, my bees died from those, those chemicals the farmer used out there. And then a month or so later, the state of Michigan sends me this letter. Here it is now, August, telling, that, telling me that it wasn't windy that day. And my bees went over to that field over there, picked up those chemicals. It's just a bunch of bullshit, okay? So I know the chemicals are getting into my hives, okay? You don't have to you don't have to debate that issue anymore. It's a proven fact. The chemicals the crop farmers using in my area are getting into my beehives. It's in my wax, it's in my pollen, it's in my honey. 
That's why my bees don't live very long through winter. I'm all right during the summer when that queen keeps laying and replacing those bees that die off. It's okay. But during the winter, the queen's not laying. The colony's getting small. And the smaller they get, the harder it is for them to cope with the cold temperatures. So it's not the varroa mites, all right? I can get rid of the varroa mites during the fall. It's the toxic chemicals. And your beekeeping supply stores, they want you to think the varroa mites are the biggest issue. They want to sell you a bunch of products to treat for varroa mites. It's not the varroa mites. It's the toxic chemicals that are killing your bees. If you live in an area where you have crop farmers, if you live in that area, guarantee you your bees are dying from those toxic chemicals. See, he wants to tell you what's going on. Yep, tell him about the bees. See, the bees. Bees are dying from toxic chemicals, right, Nikolai? And your colonies are getting small. Towards the end of winter, they're very, very small. And if they get a cold spell, they're not going to survive that cold spell or the brood's going to die. And that colony suffers a setback, okay? Thank you.